Hey guys, next day. So as I said last night, we are going to chocolate and coffee tour. Um, I'll put the information down below so you can you guys can check it out. Um, this is the name of the tour. The place, well, Northfield Cafe. So they have coffee and chocolate tour. It's a very beautiful area. Hello. Hola. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Is that the normal weather? And this is my friend. It's normal weather. Okay. Even now, it rains like crazy here, which Hello. I just most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me just Hello. Especially okay. this, this time of the year, and people are like uh, coming and expecting for sunshine and all that. And rains all the time. Okay, <laughs> my friend is and coming. All with during us. the months of Gen December and December January. And December. People, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> <coughs> okay, we can make this. We touch Well, as again, welcome. My name is is Alan, right? Um, the idea is to show you everything since we get the little seeds germinating till we get the plants producing coffee and things like that. Coffee mm -hmm. is from Africa, which I just coffee was discovered in Ethiopia, Africa. Do you know the two different types of coffee or the two different species of coffee that are like the most common? Yeah. Arabica, exactly. 100% Arabica, that's one. And the other one is? Robusta, Arabica and Robusta. Mm -hmm. The most common is Arabica. People put it in their bags because Arabica is considered good coffee. But Arabica is difficult to grow because Arabica gets infected by fungus, right? This fungus is like the cancer of all the Arabica coffee plantations, right? So that's a big problem we're having. Mm -hmm. So it's more complicated to deal with Arabica, but it's good coffee. The other one, Robusta, is like the opposite. Robusta gives more production, gives more resistance to fungus, but it's not considered good quality of coffee. So in Costa Rica, it's forbidden by law. We're not allowed to grow it. And it's like marijuana here. If we grow marijuana, we can go to jail. So it's like the same with Robusta. We're not allowed to grow it, just in case. So only Arabica. And that's how the seeds look like. They look like peanuts, right? Yeah. And they also look like unroasted coffee beans. What big corporations like, let's say Starbucks, right, come to buy from these countries is this the unroasted bean you see mm -hmm. or the green bean also this bean is what grows this is what germinates right mm -hmm. so you see farmers once a year they spread all the seeds on the ground then you see they uh, then they put them um they put like some compost on top to protect the seeds right and after two months of being waiting you see the little seedlings getting out of the ground right and in about two months, we get hundreds and thousands of seedlings, right? But from all the seedlings we get, we only select the best. The ones that are with a good color and a good size, like this one. I'll take this one, like that, you see? So this little seedling like this is ready to be transplanted, right? So we always transplant them to plastic bags. We used to do it on the ground, but now for us, it's easier to do it on plastic bags like this. And of these bags, these plants are gonna be for one year, right? Sometimes farmers do just one plant. In our case, we like doing two to have a backup. In mm. case if one doesn't survive, we still have the other one. And if they survive together, they grow together and they produce together, right? So that's why we do two. So one year, amigos, to get this plant ready. And in one year, they only grow this big, not that much. That's one year. Exactly. Oh, wow. This big, you see? <laughs> So the same, we do hundreds of plants, and the same, the best plants we get from the nursery, those are the ones we're going to transplant to the actual farm, right? So we transplant them. And then to get production out of these plants, we have to wait for about two more years, right? In two years, the plants get that big, and they start producing coffee. So it takes a while. That's why farmers, they always have to make sure they're gonna get the coffee they really want to get, Otherwise, you're gonna be wasting a lot of time and a lot of money waiting for something their customers won't like, okay? So that's the first challenge uh, farmers have about a coffee all the time, just for you guys to know. This family, they've been producing coffee 
mostly in this region, right in the middle of Costa Rica, in higher elevations. Five generations producing coffee in the same area, muchachos. But then, this started with this plantation in La Fortuna only seven years ago, right? And seven years for a coffee plantation is just a little bit. That means we're still experimenting with the plants, with the soil conditions, with the weather and things like that. But while they're experimenting with coffee, they're also producing cacao. And this region is really good for cacao. This weather is really good for cacao. So we're getting production of both. And that's what we want you to see today, okay? Got it, what kind of What kind of climate is required for coffee? It's interesting. And that's a really good question, guys. In higher elevations, especially in this region, um, let's say it's a little bit more complicated for the plants to grow, right? In higher elevations and drier conditions, especially at the end of the dry season, you'll see the plants almost dying. Sometimes without leaves, very stressful for them to grow. But it's interesting, guys. The quality of the coffee is really good, right? Mm. And in this weather here, because of too much rain, the plants, they keep healthy, they keep producing all the time, they look very nice and all that, but the quality is now the same. The first main coffee producer in the world, like the biggest coffee producer, is Brazil. Brazil. The second one is Vietnam. Vietnam. And the third one is Colombia. Colombia. Costa Rica produces just 1% of the coffee around the world. Mm -hmm. And the reason we only grow Arabica is because, as you can see, we are a very small country, right? Mm -hmm. We cannot even see it on the map, right? And we cannot compete with Brazil and Colombia by quantity, so we need to compete by quality of coffee. Country or region has the best coffee in the world? That's a very good question. I'll say, of course, Costa Rica. Right? <laughs> but all depends, amigos. A coffee is very, it's a lot about, you know, it's all about personal taste. You know? Okay. For me, Colombian coffee is really good as well, to be honest. They only grow Arabica, but look, it's about the same. I've been in Colombia and farmers there amazing they do a really good job on the farms and things like that is very experimental as costa rican as in costa rican uh, but all depends about what you do, what do you like it's interesting even in costa rica you know we can use exactly the same plant at every region and because of the weather because of the soil the flavor will change right and which one is the best it's all about depending it's all on what you like it so it's also about People keep asking, what's the best roast, you know? Light, medium, or dark? It's the same, all depends mm -hmm. on how you like it. Uh, what's the best way to brew it? Espresso, filter, the same, you know? It's mm -hmm. about personal taste. Uh Arabica is lower in caffeine. It's more balanced in flavors. Uh -huh. Actually, sometimes we can get lots of different flavors depending on the variety. And Robusta is more bitterness, you know? Uh -huh. Some people sometimes like mixing Arabica and Robusta. Most of the time, the common blend is 60% Arabica and 40% Robusta. Sometimes people like it for espresso because also a Robusta is very creamy. So it makes really good cream on the espresso and they balance the flavor with Arabica. So people do ah, okay, blends interesting. like that too, you know? Let's continue because we have much more to say. Let's right? continue. Let's continue. I'll grow it for you to see it. Really easy. We just have the bags ready with campus. We make a hole like that. And we put the little plant right inside. Who wants to plant it? Who wants to do it? You see, so this plant needs <laughs> three years to be this big to be ready to start producing coffee. Okay, so we just live on like that. They three require years lots of rain and lots of sunshine to grow all the time. Okay? And they last forever? Um, actually, they can live for about 30 years, 50 years. Okay. Sometimes, or normally, they produce well for five years, right? Mm. Oh. After five years of production, you will see the plants getting like weaker, mm -hmm. production starts getting reduced, sometimes the quality gets affected. So we just prune the plants. That's why you need... Like right on the middle. We just prune them and they start growing all over again. Oh. Then two more years for them to start producing. They produce for five years and then we prune them one more time. Oh. So we keep doing that. Uh, all the time of course if it's really good coffee we want to keep it forever you know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah but sometimes we also have to change the plants yes mm -hmm. okay. look, at it. look at this look at this guys oh pineapple pineapple so cute Remember, there are lots of different kinds of Arabica, 
Uh, the names are weird, very weird. Mm -hmm. This type of Arabica is called geisha, like the Japanese geisha, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard about geisha coffee? Mm -hmm. No. <coughs> geisha coffee in these countries is very famous because right now geisha is one of the most expensive coffees in the world. Last mm -hmm. year, uh, like last year or two years ago, one farmer in Panama got paid 1,600 US dollars a kilogram, right? Crazy, crazy expensive. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, and it's There's interesting, guys. <laughs> It's interesting, crazy expensive, and most of the time people are like, oof, probably the coffee is amazing, right? But the most interesting thing is, there are some people that don't even like it, don't even drink it, like me. This is a coffee that I don't really like. Um, you can see in Costa Rica and South America, uh, every country does a competition for the best cup of coffee, and the best coffees from every country, they get selected. And then you will see rich people trying to get the best coffee from Costa Rica, the best coffee from Panama. And of course, they do it by auction. The person who pays more gets the coffee and they get prices super, super high, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes we try it and it's, it's not what we're expecting because uh, sometimes we just don't like the flavor. Sometimes we prefer some other coffees. As I told you, coffee is all about preference, you know, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Uh, about flowers and production, judges first, we get the flowers, you see. The flowers get wide open, they get sure. pollinated by bees. We depend on bees for pollination. I also seen uh, beetles and butterflies and some other insects, but mostly bees. And then they become <coughs> cherries or berries. And some people call them just coffee beans. They get bigger and they turn yellow or they turn red, depending on the variety of Arabica. And then we just start picking all the cherries, right? So this type of coffee, these plants we have here is called uh, <coughs> Geisha, right? Mm -hmm. To be honest, we prefer to go this type of coffee. Geisha. Muy bien, muchachos. This is another variety of Arabica. This one is called Villa Sarchi. That's the name. Very weird name. This one is like a natural mutation uh, here in that we got here in Costa Rica. And we really, like, we really like this type of coffee because this coffee tastes really good on light roast, medium roast, dark roast, goes well for espresso, for filter methods, so it's a really good coffee. But the problem with this coffee is fungus. It gets very, very infected by this fungus. We call this fungus in English rust because it looks like rust, right? In Spanish, we call it roya. And to be honest, guys, we have to use chemicals about twice a year to prevent this fungus, okay? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people say that twice a year is just a little bit and we could say our coffee is organic. No, muchachos, if we're using chemicals, our coffee is not organic, mm -hmm. okay? Just in case, sometimes you can hear people saying that. They say, my plantation is organic, right? But they're close to some <coughs> other plantations and they use lots of chemicals. The wind brings those chemicals to your farm and your farm is not organic anymore, mm -hmm. right? So it's very complicated to produce organic. And it's interesting to see how they treat uh, this fungus in an organic way, especially the brands and the certifications with organic. Uh, it's difficult to know. So mm. sometimes about certifications is also a little bit complicated. Okay, but I won't be on the tail. <coughs> yes, it is. <laughs> in Costa Rica, Colombia, and the other countries in Central America, we like picking our coffee by hand, and we wear baskets like this. You see? <laughs> Do you guys? Do you know why we prefer to do it by hand instead of using machines like in Brazil? Do you know? Do you have an idea? Why? Why do you think it's better to do it by hand? Wouldn't hurt the plants as much. We protect the plants yeah. um, a lot. That's a good answer. What else, amigos? There is something even more important than that. We protect the plants. We also protect the fruits, right? <laughs> and also by hand, we're able to select the best cherries, right? The ones that are perfectly ripe. Machines, they pick everything. They pick the ones that are ready, mm -hmm. the ones that are green, and the ones that are infected by fungus. And of course, that's a problem. At the end, it, you see, that's the coffee you see at stores or coffee shops, shiny, oily, like over roasted, right? Uh, that's really bad coffee. That's the coffee people, uh, you know, it's probably it's not good, didn't taste good, <coughs> and they just burn it because like that, the coffee looks nice and people buy it because it looks oily and fresh and things like that, but that's not good coffee. It's mm. burnt on purpose, right? Mm. If our coffee is really good, it would be like a really good cup of wine. You want to enjoy flavors, you want to smell it and things like that. 
And to do that, we have to start by picking only the best cherries, like grapes for wine, something like mm -hmm. that, for you guys to have an idea. Mm -hmm. Trees like this, muchachos, very important for shade. It's interesting, this tree and the coffee plant are exactly the same age. And look how big the trees get, right? Mm -hmm. So we use them a lot for shade, especially in regions that is drier, like in the other mm -hmm. region. Uh, now with global warming and climate change, we're getting very affected as well, especially with coffee. In the other region, all the, farmer, all the farmers sorry, <clears throat> depend on the rainy season to come on time for the plants to bloom. So in the other region, they all bloom at the same time, right? The flowers get pollinated and then we get the cherries and we get the production. But during the last five years, the dry season has been taking longer than usual. One, two weeks, sometimes four weeks, right? And that's a problem because if that happens, the flowers, instead of getting open to get pollinated, they just get burnt and they just fall into the ground. Oh. So like that, we've been losing <coughs> lots of production every year, about 30% of our production. And 30% of our production every year is a lot. So that's another problem we're having. Climate so change. farmers are forced to uh, look for some other alternatives. Oh, and one of the things they have to do is trying to put some shade on the plantations. <laughs> about irrigation some farmers have irrigation most of the farmers don't have irrigation mm -hmm. in costa rica about 90 percent of the coffee farmers they're all very small farmers they just own like two hectares <coughs> five hectares maximum 10 hectares more than 10 hectares is considered a big coffee farm right just for you guys you know just for you to have an idea again for us here coffee is more experimental right so we're just experimenting with coffee but this region is really good for cacao for chocolate oh, so this cacao. is a chocolate tree that's how it grows they look like peppers at the beginning but those fruits they get much much yeah. bigger than that with cacao the same now we have lots of different types <coughs> different varieties at the beginning we're only three different species criollo forastero y trinitario now they've been mixing all of them and now we got lots of different types of cacao so they all grow they all taste and they all <coughs> use different right and this is the we call it the purple fruit, right? <laughs> That's the main characteristic. And this one, you see? Mm -hmm. Different shape, different color. So different types of cacao. Yeah. Chachos, like this is how we prune the plants. You see, after five years of production, we just prune them like that, and then they start growing all over again. In two years, they get about this big. We start producing one more time. And then they produce for five years, and then we cut it again. <laughs> Which one is more tough producing, cacao or coffee? I think coffee. Coffee? Coffee is difficult. Well, both of them, to be honest. Both of them are complicated. What is this? <laughs> what? what? Squirrel Squirrels eat them? Squirrels and woodpeckers. Oh man. How do you fight that? Yeah, <laughs> how do you fight that? <laughs> uh, well, it's only a season that we get problems with squirrels, but we mostly protect them with plastic bags. Yes, we put some plastic bags as they're getting ready. We just cover the fruits. <laughs> okay. And which country is the main producer for cacao? For cacao? In Africa. Africa. Costa de Marfil. It's our enemy, you see? <laughs> I've heard banana plant grow so fast, right? Yes, it grew quick, but even growing fast takes like one year to get the production. What is that thing yeah. come out of it? What is that flower-looking Yeah, flower that's, looking thing. those are like the, let's say the flowers. That's what comes out of the plant. You see the petals, they get open and underneath their flowers and the flowers get pollinated and they become bananas. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's very interesting. Another classroom. We <laughs> been with Chachos. Coffee is from, from? Ethiopia. 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 Ethiopia, Africa, right? <clears throat> what about chocolate? Who discovered chocolate? Mexico. Mexico? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe Costa Rica. <laughs> what do you think, amigos? Uh, it's like the opposite, you know? Coffee is from Africa and was introduced to Central and South America. And cacao is from 
South America, the Amazonas, Brazil, Colombia, Peru, and little by little, indigenous people, our indigenous people brought it to Central America and Mexico, right? So got dispersed. And then uh, Europeans came to conquer America and they got the cacao from the indigenous people. It's very interesting because our indigenous people, they had a lot of gold. And of course, people from Europe, they were looking for their gold. But for our indigenous people, their goal was cacao, okay? Here, we're gonna try it. I'm gonna do it later for you guys to see it, okay? <clears throat> These beans, exactly the same. We roast them and we can use them for chocolate or we can just use them like this to get trees growing. So we just put the beans on the plastic bags and in five days, you will see the beans germinating. So they start germinating and then in one month, the trees get this big. See, actually the bean gets right on the middle. <laughs> and then after five months, five, eight months, the trees get ready. <laughs> and as the trees are like this, are ready to be transplanted to the cacao plantation. So in about two years, we're getting production of cacao. And of course, it's much faster because cacao is native from these countries, um. just in case, just mm -hmm. for you to see, okay? Muy bien, you already saw the trees, but I want you to learn more details about, about the cow. <laughs> uh, the little flowers, you see, like coffee, they get open. Normally they say open for about 48 hours. They get pollinated mostly by bees. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. With cacao, it's a very small fly. The fly is called uh, forcipoma, and forcipoma uh, actually is in danger. So it's a little bit complicated uh, because of that. Um, you see farmers trying to do an extra effort to preserve the fly for pollination. So at the end, well, as the flowers get pollinated, eh, they become little fruits like that. And then they keep growing. And to get our fruit in full size takes from five to seven months approximately, right? As they get in full size, like this big, you see the lines on the middle changing their color. And then we just <coughs> harvest by hand. With one hand, we just hold it and then we cut it carefully. And we have to be very careful because normally where we cut it, we get flowers growing, right? And it's interesting because this is one of the few trees producing the fruits on, on the trunk, on the bark. Most of the trees, they produce the fruits on the branches, okay? And things like that. Mm. A very common question we get all the time is, how much chocolate can we get out of one fruit or how many fruits do we need to make a chocolate bar? Something like that. We took our time to figure it out, to measure everything, right? Um, normally, one fruit of cacao gives from 20 to 50 cacao beans, approximately, right? Um, one bean like this, already roasted, ready to make chocolate, it's about one gram, one gram of cacao. And we make chocolate bars of 50 grams of cacao. So how many beans do we need? 50, 50. right? And, and to get 50 beans, we need about one or two fruits approximately. Just for you guys to have an idea, okay? <coughs> okay later on the tour, we're going to roast some beans for you guys to see the rest of the process. Just in case if you're wondering. You see? We can take them with plastic bags. <coughs> uh, we're saving the biggest ones. Yeah. Of course, we know this season, is a, uh, squirrels are like a big problem. So we always get prepared, right? Mm -hmm. Fruits. Oh, wow. So beautiful. Sugar cane. That's another big culture in our country. People love sugar cane. Have you ever tried sugar cane water? Yeah. Yeah. No, you have? I have. <laughs> People love it here. Actually, later we're going to do some for you guys to, to see. <laughs> and actually, I'm going to give a little explanation about how sugar cane is made. Um, also, our grandpas, long time ago, they used to get <coughs> their homemade uh, alcohol out of sugar cane, the famous guado. Sometimes you can hear the people here saying uh, something about guado. Guado is like our Costa Rican homemade alcohol. We have two versions. We have the legal version and we have the illegal version. <laughs> Today you guys are gonna try the illegal one. Illegal one? Illegal one. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. I like looking from these plants because of these plants, they turn, they turn yellow instead of red, you know? So mm. there are different kinds. We have yellow ones, we have red ones, we have pink uh, cherries, mm. a orange cherries also, lots of different kinds. But most of the time on pictures about coffee, you will see only the red ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, cactus. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is where 
Kakao. Now you can smell. <coughs> now you can smell. Chocolate? <laughs> mm hmm. Look at this. I'm gonna use this brick. Okay. When we don't have people, this is our working place. <coughs> uh, well, like this is how the fruits look like, and they are ready, you see. And of course, next step is to open it. Uh, sometimes farmers open it like this. I'll do it like this. How many people chop their fingers off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we open it. Sorry, muchachos. Oh. And those are the famous. Looks like garlic. <laughs> cacao. Yeah. Yeah. Like garlic, yeah. Can you eat it in its current state? Or? Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Uh, squirrels and woodpeckers and local people like it because we eat the the Just outside like of the bean like this. Oh. And then you spin off the center. Mm. It's really good. Okay. Only the outside <laughs> of the bean. Who wants to try it? I, you want to try? I do. I want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> Bella, can you take this? Oh. Oh, oh man. It's like garlic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh wow. Mm -hmm. mm, so good. <laughs> then the bean, the touches, you can just put it on the ground. Mm. So later we're going to get more trees growing. <laughs> side that makes the chocolate. No. It's the inside. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's interesting, but one of the secrets to make good cacao for good chocolate it's all about fermentation process we have mm. to ferment the beans right so you see farmers always doing the fermentation of cacao on boxes of wood okay so they just open the fruits then with their fingers they get all the beans and they put all the beans on the boxes the boxes should be full of beans right and on the first two days of fermentation on the first box you'll see the beans that are getting mostly fermented will be the ones that are right on the base right so mm -hmm. they leave it on the first box for two days and after two days of fermentation they always make sure the beans were on top they go to the bottom of the next one mm -hmm. and the beans that were on the bottom go to the top so they switch the beans i like that the fermentation gets more uniform right uniform. Oh, okay. exactly two days on the second box after two days they mix them all together and then they pass them to the last one for two more days okay and like that the beans get fermented they say that's how they develop flavors on the beans okay mm. and probably you guys are wondering well and what happens with the fermentation right right now we're not fermenting because of the weather i mean it's, it's not helping but we always keep some samples for you guys to see on the first two days of fermentation the sugars start getting on this composition and this starts smelling a little bit like vinegar who wants to smell it mm -hmm. yeah yeah it smells like vinegar a bit like vinegar. Today doesn't smell that much. Tomorrow will be more concentrated. Mm. Sometimes we can feel the smell from the entrance. Very <laughs> strong smell. Oh, wow. Actually, when you guys got here, you were saying, mm, it smells different, right? And we're not even fermenting. Because... <laughs> so that's why. Then, after two days of fermentation, this gets stronger <laughs> and this starts smelling more like alcohol. Okay? You smell that? Oh yeah, it's like it's like sourdough. A little bit. Look, exactly like sourdough. Yeah, it does. Cause yeah. Stronger, ah. weird, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks weird. This one smells worse. That one makes you like wine. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, this for being glass um, conserves the water. You know. Mm -hmm. That's why we do it in wood, so the water goes away, because it needs to get dry. Mm -hmm. And at the end, the oh. white stuff gets all dry That's out. after six days exactly wow. and then we get the beans just fermented like that you see still you can yeah. smell that yes kind of alcohol actually beans. amigos this sample is fermented oh. and it's already dry okay we have it already dry <laughs> for you guys to feel the difference with the fermented beans like this is how it's finished right so like this so then next step 
after this should be the drying process, okay? And the drying process is done directly to the sun and it's done all by hand. With this weather, drying cacao mm -hmm. is not a good idea. So that's why we're not doing. Because if we dry with this weather, we start getting problems with molds and things like that. Sometimes when it's raining and we get production, we have to take the cacao from here to the other region just to do the drying in a really greenhouse they have at the other farm, you see? But this is a really big problem. Because of this, we cannot do the drying right now because of the weather conditions. It has uh, to be more dry, right? Exactly. It needs to be uh, completely, completely clean. Okay. It needs to be, let's see, let me see. It needs to be like this. So that is down right there is good-ish? It <laughs> has to be dark brown inside. Oh. It's interesting. At the beginning, I don't know if you guys show it before, but at the beginning, they start looking purple. Like that, you see? Oh. Yeah. That's the beginning part? That's exactly. the beginning. That's the beginning. So it starts getting darker and darker and darker and should be completely dark to be ready. And like that, in this is how cacao goes out of these countries. Like that is how it goes to North America, goes to Europe and all that. And then they do the roasting up there. And then they send the chocolate back to Costa Rica, but a hundred times much more expensive because it's coming with the brand packaging and everything. Mm. <laughs> so that's the thing. So that's why I told you before that the coffee is more profitable because mm -hmm. one kilogram of cacao beans like this is about two, three dollars maximum, right? Uh, and, and a lot of work. A lot of work, exactly. <clears throat> coffee is about twenty, thirty dollars, right? So mm -hmm. it's a big difference, right? A uh, cacao keeps producing coffee is just once a year, but in once a year we get the same production we get from cacao in just one year. Okay? Mm. So that's why you can see now farmers doing it smaller, and they're trying to process their own chocolate locally in Costa Rica. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's what we're trying to do. And later, of course, you guys are gonna see the rest of the process. Okay. Cool. Oh. oh, what is that? <laughs> That's so cool. Ah. The idea is to break it, to squish it, you see? Little by little. Is bamboo? No. Sugar, oh, sugar cane. Sugar cane, oh, yeah. Yeah. You see that? Uh -huh. So then, to get more water, we just make it tighter, right? And we pass it all over again. We go one more time. <laughs> Cheers. Use this Cheers. One. The proper way to drink it is. I like it. The proper way to drink it is like this: arriba, abajo, al centro, pa dentro. Mm. You got it? <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you. Next. <laughs> oh. Let's see that. <clears throat> okay, amigos. These fruits, <laughs> inside, we open it, and there are the coffee beans oh. or the coffee seeds, you see? Most of the time, we get two. Sometimes, we, get, we can get three, but also, it's very common to get three. just one, you just see? One. Actually, there was another one, but the other one didn't get developed. So, this mm. is basically just one. Mm. This bean is what people call in coffee shops pea berry. People call it pea berry because it has a different shape, right? Uh. Pea berry coffee. Or sometimes people call it espresso bean. Okay? Espresso bean, yes. Yes, just in case. Espresso bean. It's interesting. Sometimes some customers they say the beans for being different, they don't look nice with the other ones. So sometimes they want us to remove the pea berries, right? So we have to pass the beans through a sift to remove only the pea berries. Mm. Or sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes we just get customers uh, paying lots of money only for pea berries, okay? So uh -huh. it's very interesting. Most of the time we sell them all together, all mixed together. Moving. Uh, as we peel the coffee like this, next step is the drying process, like cacao, about mm. the same, right? But depending on how we dry the beans like that, we could influence different flavors and different characteristics in our cup of coffee, mm -hmm. okay? In Costa Rica, most of our big corporations, the big middlemen, they dry the coffee, right, with big machines. 
But to dry on big machines, they always wash the seeds. They remove this juice. This juice is very sweet, and for being sweet and for being juicy, we call it the honey of the coffee. That's the name of it, right? But to wash it, to remove it from the beans, the process requires lots of water. And at the end, the water gets all contaminated with honey, and now it's getting a little bit more control, but some years ago, all that water used to go to rivers, and that used to be a really big problem of pollution in Costa Rica, mm -hmm. where you find the big factories of coffee production, most of the time smells really bad, and it's because of the honey of the coffee, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, some small farmers decided not to wash it anymore, uh, we're trying to try not to use water anymore on the process of coffee so we dry it with the honey right mm -hmm. but of course if we dry it with the honey it takes a little bit longer because the coffee keeps more moisture so sometimes it's challenging challenging because of the weather conditions but for being dried with the honey farmers realize that if they do it like that a uh, they can influence or they can get different flavors in their cup of coffee. So they can get flavors like fruits, flavors like sweet, like sweeter flavors and things like that. And now we have customers from all over the world coming, buying coffees with that process. And that's what we call honey processed coffee. And sometimes you can see it on specialty coffee shops, the baristas talking about honey processed coffee. And most of the people think it's coffee mixed with honey. Mm -hmm. But in case if you guys see it, it's not coffee mixed with honey. It's just about the drying process, just in case. When we dry, that's the difference. This ones were dry with the honey, and this one were washed. So you see the difference? Yeah, yeah. This is washed. This is washed. And this is with honey. And this is with the honey, right? Mm. So just in case, it's not coffee mixed with honey. It's just the natural sugars out of the It beans. just caramelized. Exactly, yes. As the coffee gets dried, next step is to Break it, peel it, Another shape, as peel I it. did at the beginning, to get the bean from the inside. Yeah. And again, this is what we export, the unroasted coffee bean, right? Just like that. You export it. Exactly. To peel it, right now it's really easy because we have machines to do it, of course. But when coffee came to Costa Rica, when coffee started here, our grandpas didn't have machines to do it. So they started peeling the coffee like this. Oh, wow. Like that, wow. see? And that doesn't crush them, it just... Ah, a little bit, right? Little bit, yeah. So our grandpas, especially men, they used to peel all day long, and then women used to do, for me, the worst part, the separation, I mean, this. <laughs> oh, like this. Wow. Yeah. You see? Or sometimes using the wean, the Can famous winnowing process, right? Like this. Just like that, you see? I do that then, yeah. And then, amigos, it's not enough. Yeah. After this, we have to separate all the good beans, the ones that are on perfect shape and perfect color, like all this, from the ones that are very small, from the ones that are like that, over dried. This is good, this is bad. Broken, you see? Yeah. And all these beans. Got muchachos. Like this is how, how the coffee goes out of Costa Rica. The unroasted bean. So like this is how they take it. And then they roast it in the other countries. They roast it in Europe. They smell roast coffee? it in... Mm -hmm. It doesn't smell like coffee. Doesn't no. smell like coffee. Mm -hmm. The magic of this will be on the roasting process. Mm -hmm. Like a cow. Exactly the same thing. Yeah. Yes, later we're going to roast like a small batch of coffee. But now what we're going to roast is cacao. We did niggas, two here, two in front, and two on this side, if you don't mind. Wait, remember, the cacao beans were fermented, mm -hmm. they were dried, and now they're ready to be roasted. With the roasting, is how we make the magic, right? This gentleman is gonna show us how people in the past started roasting cacao. Right now it's really easy. Back there we have a big machine and there we roast 10, 20 kilograms of cacao at the same time. But again, we want you to see the traditional way. Okay, so this one. Yes. He's gonna show us how our grandma's used to do it. A long time ago. <laughs> again, with the roasting, 
all the characteristics of the bean inside, it's gonna change, right? The flavor, the smell, right? We're gonna move it like this for about two hours until the beans start getting roasted. No, I'm just kidding, only five minutes, I think. <laughs> cool. Five minutes, I think. This way, in five minutes, you're gonna hear the beans popping like popcorn. That's when we know the beans are already roasted. And as the beans are roasted, we should stop. Otherwise, they could get overcooked, over roasted, and that won't be good, okay? Judges, we're gonna stop right there. Check this one. You see, muchachos? How quick? Muchachos, <laughs> <laughs> now carefully, let's smell the beans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the beans are roasted. It's easier for us to start doing all the different products of our chocolate. Okay? After that, next step is to peel it, like coffee. Exactly the same thing. So we separate the bean from the shell. The bean goes for chocolate, and the shell goes for tea, okay? No. Have you ever tried cacao tea before? No. no. Made out of the shell? You guys want to try it? Yeah. yeah, of course. Okay. This shell goes into a French press with some hot water, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of sugar. We let it sit for about four minutes, and then we just press it to make the structure, like this, you see? And like that, we get the cacao tea, okay? Cacao tea. And let's try it out. Arriba, para abajo. Arriba, para abajo, centro, para adentro. You got it? You got it? <laughs> oh, Arriba, wow. Abajo, so good. Oh, wait, how's this sweet? You put, you, oh, put A little sugar? bit of sugar. Okay. Yeah. It's so good. Oh. Very good. Oh, it's cute. Very good. That is super good. <laughs> Glenn, try it. Cacao tea. Touch it. That's the first product you make out of. Very good. Very good. <laughs> okay. Look, you can actually. This being like this, it's about 60% powder, and the rest After is roast water. It, the cocoa butter. Sometimes you extract gonna... the butter from the bean. Ooh. The cocoa butter. Mm -hmm. Do you know what people use the cocoa butter for? Skin. This is cocoa. Skin. 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 And this is for the tea. Lipsticks, chapsticks, so things like that. <laughs> exactly. That's why white chocolate is not real, it's fake, it's not chocolate, right? Is it doesn't have cacao. The uh, uh, white chocolate is a lot of milk and lots of sugar mixed with cocoa butter. That's it, right? Just no, co no chocolate in it? No chocolate. Oh. Just in case. Maybe. Uh, in our case, we just do it Nashville, right? Uh, we just get the bean and then we just break it on small pieces like that. Have you ever seen those small pieces before? No. At stores? I don't, I, I don't know, I feel like I have. The famous snacks? I have not. Uh -huh, yeah. yep. People eat it like this, okay? People eat it a lot because like this is considered a medicine, right? It's really, really good for health. Wow. Like this is how cacao is recommended to be eaten 10 grams a day. It's really good for the memory, really good for the heart. It's full of antioxidants. Yeah. Right? It's antidepressive, make, uh, makes Oh wow, like that. that's awesome. So it has lots of really, mm -hmm. has lots just of. Just like this, huh? Benefits. Exactly. And people eat it just like this. Do you guys want to try yes. like this? Cacao nips. Yes, we be at the. So good, so good. A lot of antioxidants. Again, it's something we're not used to eat. 100%. Normally, we, exactly. Normally we look for the chocolates because it's already processed, right? Mm -hmm. But like that, is, like that is how it's recommended to be eaten. And here's the thing, it's not as bitter as 100% chocolate bars. That's a good point. That's why? A good point. Yeah, why? Okay. Why do you think this? <laughs> yes. What's happening? Why? Now we're gonna do it. Mm. Actually, you guys are gonna make your own chocolate. Do you want to make your own chocolate? Our indigenous people, they started making the taste of the cow on the famous metati by hand, they used to do it, right? Then Europeans came and they brought grinders, the meat grinders, right? And here, we're gonna grind it today. Who wants to do it? Who wants to grind it? Yeah. Who wants to do it? Like, I wanna do it. Muy bien, but you have to use your both hands and use. Muscle, some muscle on that. We did, we did. Big muscles, huh? Try. <laughs> <laughs> good job, amigo. Very good, very good. 
That's awesome. See, amigos, Jets, please like. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, amigo. That's Hold awesome. on. <laughs> Believe it, look at that. And it's interesting, guys. Now, this tastes much stronger. Tastes mm -hmm. more, more bitter. Okay? <laughs> Do you guys want to try like this? Yes. Okay, we're going to mix it with sugar. Mm -hmm. If you guys to see how the flavor changes, all right? <laughs> oh, wow. Ooh, very bitter. But then try it. Change? Completely, right? Totally. Melissa has a one, yes. Very bitter. I think my dad would like Oh man, very bitter. That's like why. He didn't like it. I don't like it either, amigos. It's very strong. That's a real flavor. So how does it change the flavor? You see how it changed? This is my candy. Change, right? Look at the touches. Okay, we're gonna add some sugar to that. And see how much you guys like it. Do you remember this sugar? Yes, sugar cane. Sugar cane, all right? So let's mix it with some sugar. All right, right now we have the machine. But again, the process takes a long time, right? And we don't have 20 hours to do it. Okay, let's try this. So just have it ready. <laughs> you guys try it Oh, very good. At the beginning, the Olmecas was one tribe before the Aztecs. They used to mix the cacao with just water. The original name of the water was Chukula. Chukula in Nahual, their dialect, means a bitter water. Okay? Bitter water. Then Aztecs started adding more ingredients. Ingredients like, do you know what ingredients are or were from these countries at the beginning? Ingredients like corn, remember? Yeah. The corn. This is roasted corn already ground. The famous pinol. Okay? So we're gonna add some pinol to the drink. That's why you grow corn. Exactly. <laughs> Another ingredient was vanilla. Oh, yes. Vanilla, vanilla extract. <laughs> yes, now we produce vanilla, but vanilla is from Mexico. Okay? If, and also, Aztecs do you used to add some pepper to it. Pepper. Right? Some okay. cayenne pepper. Do you like pepper in your chocolate? Yes. I yeah, love be it. Be honest, because no? I haven't no, no. tried, but uh, no? I'm gonna try. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to try. You want to try? Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. gonna add juice a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Nothing came out of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's too wet. Too, too wet. wet, yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> And then, of course, they didn't have sugar, so they used to get it sweet with honey. But in this case, we're gonna add sugar, muchachos. Okay, good. Some sugar, okay? And then we have to mix it all with water. Okay? Water. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you have a good time? <laughs> yeah. And then we have to mix it like this, muchachos. Oh. Have you ever heard a song like bate, bate, chocolate, bate, bate, chocolate, bate, bate, bate chocolate? <laughs> so we mix it everything like this, muchachos, with the famous molinillo. Oh. Mm. <laughs> now what's your own chocolate, guys? Oh, wow. Cheers. <laughs> yes. Cheers. Very good. <laughs> this is what I'm... See? The chocolate. It's from the machine, right? And the machine gets refined and this chocolate is ready to make chocolate, chocolate bars. bars. Chocolate exactly. Bars. Yes, so here I have two samples, amigos. I have dark chocolate and I have milk chocolate. Do you want to try just one or both? Both. <laughs> both. Okay, let's try you know the answer one. already. <laughs> <laughs> so good. You can use the spoon, muchachos, or if you need an extra spoon, just let me know, okay? Good? Because I'm gonna chocolate. Mm. Let's put it from here, from here, and then this I guess. <laughs> dance, dance. <laughs> dance, dance. <laughs> 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 
put it on the top. Just most of the time, I top. This is roasting process. Roasting process. Most of the time, I top. You will find uh, three different types of roast: light, medium, and dark. Question: Which one has more caffeine, light, light or light. dark? Exactly, Olivia. The lighter the roast, the more caffeine. The darker the roast, the less caffeine. Oh. Most of the time, people think it's the opposite because dark roast takes stronger. Bad tasting stronger doesn't mean it has more caffeine, mm. right? The lighter the roast, the more caffeine. Just in case. And this is light, light roast. No, this is unroasted. Unroasted. Yes. And this is medium and dark. Medium and dark. Right? If you are dark, what happens? If you want to find the roast and find the And this, this is this is this light? No, yes, it's almost light. Really. Almost light. Yes. Almost ready. Touch it. Look at that. Mm -hmm. So is this almost light? Almost, almost light? medium. Almost medium. Oh, medium. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. already past light. Only to show. Touch it. Then. Mm. And there's still some flakes from. Exactly. Yeah, because it's hot. The beef are too hot, so they keep getting roasted, right? So we have to put some air into it. So like that, cool off, little by little. Yeah. The big machine has, does all this automatically. But again, we just want you to see something, yeah. something different. These are all medium. These are all medium roast. <laughs> <laughs> one is good, one is like on between, and one is bad. Tell me, which one is good and which one is bad? By smell? No. By tasting? Uh, by, by color? Smelling. By the color. bean. By, by the, the bean. bean. Looking at the bean? Yes. When the huh. coffee is fresh, most of the time, that's I think this is good. With the enemies. Which one is the best? This I guess one, is that one. I, I go with this. <laughs> Why? It just looks more uniform and pretty. <laughs> Are you sure, Olivia? No, of course not. <laughs> Amigos, look, the best one. It's this one. That one? Okay. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. The beans are very uniform, ah. shape, and color. Oh, okay? I guess I can see, yeah. This coffee yeah. is from higher altitudes, from the other farm, okay. from our plantation. The beans are mm. smaller, and it's interesting. The coffee tastes really good. Those beans are exported under the term of strictly hard beans. Strictly hard, hard mm -hmm. beans in English. That's. Huh. That's how we export it. Costa Rican coffee is exported like that, strictly hard beans. So that's coffee grown in higher elevations. Huh. This coffee, okay. This coffee is exactly the same coffee, the same type of Arabica, the same drying, the same process, but this one was grown on Lower. this region, right? Oh, Here. not higher up. Exactly. And look. Yeah, different sizes. Yeah, different sizes. Correct. Yeah. Wow. You see? It's interesting, guys. Before roasting, before roasting, this coffee is bigger and heavier. This coffee is smaller and lighter than this one. But after roasting, is the opposite. opposite. Right? This one stays heavier and this one stays lighter. And at the end, that one wow. gets like broken. Right? <laughs> Looks yeah, like yeah. broken. Other customers, especially middlemen, they see it. And they don't say, mm, mm. probably my customers won't like it, so I won't buy this type of coffee. Mm. And actually they're right because this coffee tastes lighter. It's not as balanced as this one. So this is a coffee that we have to use it to mix it with some other coffees, mm. to fix some other coffees, and has to be mostly ground, okay? Mm. Doesn't taste bad, but doesn't taste as good as this one. Mm. For you guys to have an idea. So that's how they look like. This one is the worst, but <laughs> it's interesting, guys. These coffees are the same, the same type of coffee grown in the same region. Really? Exactly, uh, everything the same. Wow. But the only difference is the selection. These beans were selected on the plant. At the end of the season, we have to pick everything to clean the plantation, right? And we also pick the green ones. The ones that are lighter this is the worst one. are the ones that were not ready. The ones that were green you see mm. and because of that this coffee is gonna taste super super bitter and if we try to sell it in whole beans you realize really easy but it's not good coffee okay mm. that's mm. why people sell it powder oh. you know, mixed in with other stuff yeah. 
Yeah. Or sometimes people do this too. Interesting. You can put it with chocolate. Wow. <laughs> yeah. right? Maybe. Why yeah. not? Or sometimes people do this. This is very, very common to see. Yeah. You see? Oh, yeah. I've seen all coffee I've seen is like this black. It's really yeah. dark. Yeah, why is it so dark? And this is bad, huh? Exactly. It's That's really over roasted. It smells coffee. like over roasted. Not coffee. Exactly. Because if we burn it like that, we can make our coffees Look all looking exactly the same color, mm -hmm. the same size. Yep. Sometimes look shiny and oily, like in the picture. And people think it's good because this it's is shiny. Super it's super bad. Coffee. Especially big corporations. Big corporations, they like doing this type of roast because with that type of roast, they can get all their coffees tasting exactly the same at every one of their coffee shop, right? Mm -hmm. But of course, they don't, need to, they don't need to use really good quality of coffee to do that. Actually, the successful of those companies or those businesses has been because of that, you know? Mm -hmm. Standard yes, flavors. Yes, and and about coffee, every step is very complex. You know, the farm is a whole process. The drying process is a whole process to roasting coffee. And now with the third wave of coffee, brewing coffee is crazy. You can see baristas getting lots of really specialty coffees and they measure how much coffee, how much water, mm -hmm. the time of extraction, the temperature of the water, and lots of different things. Yeah. Right? And I'm gonna give a little explanation for you guys. I'm gonna be one of the most common methods to brew coffee is the espresso machine to make espressos, right? And cappuccinos, lattes, and all those. Another method is the Italian mocha pot, right? The Italian mocha is oh yeah, this one, right? That is yeah. very common. Italian mocha pot, drip coffee 60. It's mm -hmm. like a drip method, right? In Costa Rica, our grandmas, they use a traditional cloud filter. You see, that's like Costa Rican way. Siphon. The Japanese mm. siphon, a whole science mm. experiment. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. that's, awesome. that's so cool. It's very nice, but it's very complicated. It's <laughs> too fancy for me. This is only if you want to impress your friends, weekends, <laughs> you know, that you are into really good coffees and things like that. Wow. It's complicated to make it to make it, coffee with it? It's actually, it's not very complicated, but some days ago stronger? I was trying to brew some coffee like that for some people and it took like three hours. So oh. Oh. I said I don't do it anymore. <laughs> yes, the uh, German Chemex, you see? This one is really good. The AeroPress that is getting common now, we call it the coffee syringe. <laughs> coffee makers that are very common. You press the button and at six o'clock your coffee is ready. <laughs> oh. And methods like French press, which I just like this one. Mm -hmm. French press, French one of press. my favorites. Really easy and really nice coffee, okay? Yeah. But in Costa Rica, the original Costa Rican brewing method is this one. This one was invented in Costa Rica. That's so See? cool. <laughs> yes. It's like a Chemex, but without glass. Exactly. It's like the Chemex, but Chemex. a different material. Okay. And it has this one here, oh. has an extra hole. Oh. That one, this is the <coughs> oldest way of brewing coffee in the world. But this one, of course, they brought it from Italy. Oh, Italy. Italy? So it's not wow. like something invented here, you know? Oh. Just in this one was created by one, one barista in Costa Rica, okay? So if you see it at souvenirs, it's not for flowers, it's for coffee, okay? <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> My mom keeps saying that's very nice for flowers, but we can charge this. But amigos, if you go to visit my mom or my grandma, they'll brew the coffee for you on mm -hmm. the traditional cloud filter. So today I'm gonna do it like that for you guys to see. Okay? And I'm gonna use That's the best one. The hand grinder, you see? Uh, right measure for coffee and water? No. No? Mm -hmm. One gram of coffee, four fifteen milliliters of water. That's what is always recommended. One gram coffee and 14? 15. 15 milliliters, milliliters of water. water. That's what is recommended to do, right? And baristas, they measure everything, especially if, if it's coffee that is very expensive, you'll see they take their time to brew everything, okay? Our grandmas at home, they make it much easier. <laughs> at home, it would be like this. Una. Dos, tres, cuatro, 
5. Vamos, Cal. No? No? Okay. So I'll take yours. <laughs> one for me. And always one extra. Just in case. Huh? Do you know what's the right temperature for coffee? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Below boiling, amigos. Below boiling, not yes. boiling. In Fahrenheit will be 206. In Celsius will be 92, 95 Celsius. 92, 95. Yes. I am just going to be all upset every day I make a French bread. You see? <laughs> Gracias, Alan. Mucho gusto. Un placer, amigo. Pura vida. Gracias a usted, amigo. Pura, Pura vida. vida. Cheers. Do you want my coffee? No, no, no. Because you have to try it. Do you guys get energy if you drink too much coffee? Do you get I go hyper. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ah, repas, amigos. Is this bread? Yeah. Oh, they bring you these too. What is the difference? This one is dark and medium. Oh, more coughing. Okay, this is dark. Less coughing. Amigos, do you need milk with your coffee? No, my favorite is, I like this one, French press, because it's really easy. But it has the grounds that you No, 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 the taste, taste-wise. No, but we have to do it coarse. Yeah, course grind. Course grind. I actually didn't explain that to you. Sorry, guys. I'll do it. We just don't do it first enough. Then. Well, we para, para el. Taste, taste wise, which one is your favorite? Which method? Hey, muchachos. I really like this one. Oh, oh yeah. Chemex. With the paper filter. Called Chemex. So they have a little store here and they have different products that we tried. I definitely go with the. I mean, my preference is dark, dark roast. Um, this is dark roast. Dark roast. And whole beans. Whole and the unroasted one. Yeah, it's coming. He's, it's coming. For my dad. How about cacao tea? Cacao tea, yes, yes, definitely. Let's get some cacao tea. Or we can get him some cacao nibs. Yeah. Cacao nibs, yes. There you go. I want cacao nibs. Cacao okay. nibs. So, thank you so much, Alan. Gracias, amigos. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Very, very nice to meet you. Very thank nice you to meet you guys. Bye. Enjoy Costa Rica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.